Welcome in to Inside Carolina's This Week in Baseball with Coach Scott Forbes, North Carolina, coming off two tough losses to Greenville, that team in Greenville, East Carolina Pirates, 6-5 in both of those. Scott, I'll get right into it. Uh, two very similar games. Uh, we talked last week. You wanted to find starting pitchers that could go deep in the game. You got that both Friday and Sunday and the bullpen struggle. Just overall thoughts on, on what you saw um, in the, those two East Carolina matchups. Yeah, um, you know, first of all, I thought the atmosphere was tremendous for our guys at both places. Um, you know, early in the season, you have a choice to make. Do you play teams that you know you're going to get wins against, or do you play good quality teams that you feel like in the long run um, obviously, you want to get wins against anybody. So I'd be sitting in here Monday feeling a lot better if we'd have won yesterday or won both. But I still think we're better. I don't think I know we're better because of the two games. Um, for us, it was a, it was a tell of, <clears throat> you know, the little things. What I told the guys, you have to do the little things, and you have to execute against really good teams. And we didn't execute out of the bullpen, and we left too many runners on base to, to bridge the gap and to get more runs and to take a bigger lead. Um, but when you give up, you know, six runs in the eighth and four runs in the seventh, that can be hard to overcome. And we still had a chance, uh, and, and, you know, to, to win both games even while doing that. So um, the week before, our starters weren't very good. This week they were really good, and our bullpen wasn't very good. And, you know, we'll shore that up and hopefully be able to put it all together soon. Yeah, that's what, uh, you know, I, I said it inside Carolina on our Diamond Hills message board has a game thread. And, you know, folks, it's pretty wide open in there and, and folks are very interested. But I said, you've got to learn how to pitch in pressure, pressure situations. It's one thing to do it in the fall. It's one thing to do it in the preseason. I don't think you guys will face a tougher away environment, maybe until Clemson, than you had on Friday night. And, you know, those – those guys got to learn how to do it. What did you see that maybe not necessarily concerned you, but did the environment affect those guys at all? Or was it strictly East Carolina's pretty good baseball team and those guys can hit? You know what? Honestly, um, the thing I was most proud of is our guys got after it. They competed. They competed with poise. Um, we didn't walk them very often, and we did. They were close pitches, I thought, that could go either way, three, two walks. Um, one at their place with Dalton Pence. I thought he had two guys struck out. Sometimes you don't get the call and you got to overcome it. So you can't blame it on the umpires. Both teams have those calls. But that's what I look for the most this early. Who's overwhelmed? Who loses their control or their poise? And I didn't see it in anybody. Um, and that's where I'm tipping my hat to them in this in these two games. Um, they got a couple big hits and we didn't make good pitches in our counts, um, Zesto was a good – Zesto Wiki yesterday, you know, had some guys with two strikes and didn't put them away and actually made bad pitches. Um, and it's early, you know. And when you, when you have a bunch of guys that haven't done that before, like you said, they have to learn to do it. Even Davis Palermo, you know, people are quick to forget. Um, you know, Davis didn't really emerge until about halfway through our season, probably when we started to play better. Um you know, he emerges that true three out guy or, or maybe even six out guy. So we feel like we've got a bunch of guys that are capable and you know, things are going to change throughout the course of the season. But I was to answer your question. I don't think we were overwhelmed at all. Um, I think our guys really competed at a high level and had great poise and that'll serve them well throughout the season. Yeah. Uh, sort of elaborating on that. Can you talk about you, certainly the comeback attempt uh, in Greenville and then, you know, the ninth, uh, in Chapel Hill where, you know, you, you pitch hit for Asuna and Chikonsky popped up a bunt and then just couldn't quite get the, get the runners over and, or get the, get the tying run across the plate. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I feel like our offense is, is, is good. Um, it's dynamic, it's powerful, but again, we still left too many guys on base. We have to do a little better job of situational hitting um, and execution, like getting that bunt down. That was a tough one, that instance in particular, because in a week or two weeks from now, you, you know, I don't even consider um, doing that from, for Alberto. But, you know, having the broken ham eight, uh, and he's actually a good bunter, but he hasn't been able to bunt. Like, normally we bunt every day. We get off that machine. Um, 
you know, you second guess yourself when you're in this seat all the time. I've always second guessed myself, especially as a pitching coach. Uh, but, you know, I do feel like when Alberto is back to himself, which it won't be long, I'm letting him hit, you know, 90, 95% of the time. But in that situation, I thought, okay, I like the guys, even if they walk Vanderbilt break, I feel like Patty's had really good at bats. Um, we're at home. I think we have an opportunity. Um, and again, if I left Alberto in there and he hits a double, that would have been the right call. If he grounds him to a double play, that would have been the wrong call. But we all know that once Alberto gets going and once he's in there, I'm not hitting for him. And if I need to bunt, I'll burnt, bunt Alberto Asuna. Um, but with that being said, you know, Joe's got to be to come in. We, got, we have to have guys that come in in that situation and execute. And Joe will. You know, these kids beat themselves up hard enough. Uh, so I don't beat them up hard. We just go to work today and get better at it. Yeah. Well, certainly one of the one of the really interesting points uh, on Friday was seeing how Max Carlson came out pitching seven shutout innings. What made him more effective in his second start of the season? You know, Max, he's a big game guy. The bigger the game, the better he's going to pitch. I'm going to challenge him this week, you know, to treat this game like Virginia, to get in that mindset. Um, that's just who he is. It didn't surprise me at all, but he's a year better, a year older. He's pitched in big games. His changeup equalizes anybody. Um, his fastball command is better, and his velocity is holding now above 90. He's not going down to 86, 87, 88. Um, and when you can have that changeup, you know, they played eight lefties. It equalizes them just like Bo Bear. Bo Bear was able to go through it and use that changeup effectively. Um and, and that was the difference in those two guys this week. They really attacked the strike zone and threw a lot of strikes while keeping those those guys off balance with a quality off-speed pitch. Looking at those starters, uh, I mean, Carlson and Bovair were great. Uh, you're going to have three on the weekend <laughs> eventually, um, even though, uh, you know, maybe it was bad weather in Greenville on Saturday. It certainly was around here. But as far as that second – or that third starter on the weekend. Will Sandy was your guy. Um, we talked last Wednesday about Knapp's performance and Percival's performance. Where are you there in the rotation? I know you don't want to go there too early, but you got a couple games against VCU this week. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Because when you play a team like ECU and the rival with the fans, you know, the, you know, obviously it hurts and it stings when you lose those games but it really can help you down the road um, being in close games, win or losses. Um, I'm a big believer that failure is our greatest teacher, to be honest with you. So um, what we have learned right now is, you know, we're not sure who's going to be that closure. And although Connor Bovair is a weekend starter, you just don't know. A month from now, he could be closing. But right now we're going to stick with Crossing and Bovair. Um, and we are going to move Will Sandy to our bullpen. We just feel like he's older. Um, he recovers extremely well. We know he can start. Um, you know, that's something that he's that he's done his whole life. Uh, we're going to start nap tomorrow, and then we're going to start Percival on Wednesday. We got Percival up, and he was pretty hot, so we're going to give him an extra day and start nap on Tuesday. And one of those two guys could move in the weekend rotation, and we've also got a guy like Kevin Acey, who was the Ivy League pitcher of the year, back-to-back -back years as a starter. Um, didn't have a good first outing out of the bullpen with Seton Hall. It's the first time he's really ever pitched out of the bullpen. So he's another guy that could give us some length. Um, and, you know, so we'll just stick with those two guys and throw Nap and Percival out there and figure out Sunday when we get here. Let me uh, – we could talk about pitching the entire show all the time, but <laughs> let me talk about Tomas Frick. I mean, he he's seeing a beach ball, Coach. He, he looked really good at the plate yesterday, Sunday, what have you seen from him? Just a veteran guy, obviously, um, but he stepped up big time. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and we saw that in the preseason. He's a junior. He's stronger. He's been in the big games. He's always been a, a clutch performer. Um, I feel like, you know, him and Coach Weir's Vicky have really worked on his swing as well, you know, and his approach. He's not getting around balls as much and hitting as many balls in the six hole, he's working on, he's worked really hard on getting the path right. And he's believed in it. And he made that change during this off season, the fall and the spring. And it's, he was, he was one of my picks like, okay, this guy's got a chance to have a really big year for us. 
And we need a couple of those guys to have big years for us because, you know, you lose Angel Zarate, Danny Serretti, Mikey Madej. we got to find guys to pick up those hits and those RBIs. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of Tomas for that because he's worked hard to get his body in the best shape it's ever been in. Then we, we talk about people that are absolutely scalding the ball. How about the, the, the hot run that Horvath is on right now? I mean, just- you know, not, not surprising, you know, we, uh, you know, another, uh, you know, I listened to, to coach Davis's uh, press conference about how sickening it is. Um, you know, how people get on these kids with Pete Nance and, you know, and how proud he was of Pete Nance of just sticking with it. And, even though it was a COVID year, you know, Mac had two tough starts. Um, and a lot of people, I'm sure, were like, why is this kid staying in the lineup? Why are they sticking with this kid? Um, but those people aren't here every single day. Mac Horvath is a leader. He's a worker. He's a team-first guy. Had a chance to sign professionally this past year. Decided to come back to North Carolina because he wants to try to get to Omaha and lead us to Omaha. And he's our guy. Um, and when you're that type of guy, you get rewarded. You work that hard, and, and and you're such a great teammate, and all you care about is winning. For Matt Horvath, if he goes four for four and we lose, he's madder than anybody else. And that's why I know we have a special group down there. And it, it's good to – it's I'm excited for Mac um, because I think Matt Horvath is going to be a big leaguer. And uh, I think he's going to show a lot of people this season, you know, this is what development's about. This is what about, you know, getting a little bit better every single day is about. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. It may surprise everybody else because he had slow starts. But I'm around the kid every single day, and I see, you know, what he's work, what, how hard he works. Yeah, one of the one of the really interesting things is looking at the Tar Heels right now have a 49 to 51 base on ball to K ratio. How does Coach Weir's Bicky work the fine balance with the batters between taking marginal pitches and finding pitches to drive? It's just yeah, uh, yeah, that's. That skill is just incredible. It's a challenge because, you know, college umpires aren't big league umpires. Um, we saw a couple calls against with Vanderbilt yesterday that I thought could have been balls. If you look at that track, man, but when the umpire is giving them a ball or two off, we have to adjust. But at the end of the day, Matt, great hitters hit mistakes. Um, if you're constantly swinging at pitchers' pitches, you're going to get out. And that's what East Carolina did a good job of. We made some mistakes with two strikes. They made us pay for them. We locate those pitches. It's not always – about getting a strikeout, it's, like, it's about making a quality pitch because hitting is difficult. Um, but Coach Weir's, I mean, we train our guys, you know, don't even swing in BP if it's not a strike. You know, train your eyes to swing at strikes. We're hunting the middle of the plate, three, four, five is what we call them if you put six baseballs across from both sides. So it's something we work on every single day and our guys take a lot of pride in it. And then in the team concept, you don't look at your batting average. You understand that if you walk or you get hit by a pitch, that's a single. You know, you may not be four for five that day, but you're on base four times and you get a sack fly. So those things help our team win and our guys are fully bought into that. Stoke is a, a magnet this year as well. Getting hit by a pitch. Hey, you get down to first, that's all that matters. End up at first. Let me ask you about um, what you want to accomplish this week against Virginia Commonwealth before Stony Brook. You know, we've talked about the bullpen. We started off on that. Obviously, you guys um, had some struggles there. You want starters to go deep in games. But how do you balance with wanting the bullpen to get some reps, to get some confidence midweek to be ready, um, you know, when you when you get into a series like East Carolina? Yeah, no doubt. Well, you know, if your bullpen's really struggling in game – 54, 55, 56, you're, you're like, dang, man, like, what are we going to do? You know, this is game – I don't even know. this. We played seven games, mm-hmm. so we only have 49 more, right? Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, we're going to keep throwing guys out there. Um, you know, Michael Moore, he couldn't get anybody out as a starter in 2011. Uh, you know, we threw him in the bullpen, and he stabilized our bullpen. So that could happen within the staff. But you still want your starters to go deep. And I firmly believe that, you know, your start it starts with starting pitching. And we've got enough talent to figure out our bullpen. You know, that's what coaching is about and helping these kids be successful. Um, and I feel good about that. I do, you know, the challenge I'm going to talk to our guys about today is we haven't been doing a good job of winning innings six through nine. Let's be even better 
uh, you know, let's be better inning six through nine. But what people look at is the bullpen blowing the lead, right? Okay, they don't look at runners on first and second with no outs. They don't look at a runner at second with no outs, not advancing him to third and then scoring that run. Situational stuff where if we capitalize and we instead of getting five runs, we score seven, we win the game. So it's a team game. And I talk to our guys, be careful just looking at the bullpen. Let's look at the whole team concept. What can we all do better to help our team be successful? And that's what we're going to work on. Okay, inning six through nine, that, that's when you got to make the tough decisions as a coach. That's when you got to make the tough plays, but you also have to execute. So we're going to work really hard on just those little things, doing everything well inning six through nine. It's kind of like blaming the field goal kicker for missing the kick at the end of the game when you – played like trash the first 59 minutes and 30 seconds yeah yeah definitely and we always say you win as a team you lose the team um there's enough gossip in the world people want to run their mouths keep your eyes you know forward and and, and be in the moment and it's all about our team and and uh you know i got i can't speak out of both sides of my mouth i preach every day let's be process oriented let's get better today uh and losing stinks um but it's a new day so we're going to go back to work and get better let me ask you this before I let Matt wrap it up with you. We're talking with Scott Forbes, head coach, North Carolina baseball, Virginia Commonwealth, coming to Boshammer Tuesday and Wednesday. Scott, when you, when you are deciding on who to go to in the bullpen, and, and this is a general question, not game specific, is it a gut feel? I know it's matchup based at times, but how, how do you, as a former pitching coach, now a head coach, decide, I want this guy, I want Padgett, I want Peterson, yeah. or I want whoever? How, how does that process work? You know, I'm thankful I was a pitching coach so long because, you know, I grew from most of my mistakes, honestly, you know, um, not thinking it through as well as I should have or maybe not going with my gut because I think you have to go with your gut most of the time if you feel it strongly. But it's a combination, you know, what are you seeing and what do you feel like is best for that moment? When, when you don't have an established closure to start the season, um, you know, it starts with me with guys that I know are going to throw strikes. Uh, and if you look at it, we haven't been getting beat because of walks. That one three-two walk at East Carolina. I mean, I'm sorry, but right down the middle, maybe a, a hair low from Dalton Pence. We gave up some hits. So working with those guys, like, hey, what are you doing well? Well, you're pounding the strike zone, but then when you get 0-2, you're trying to do too much and you're hanging a slider right down the middle, like Zestawicki did yesterday, or a fastball right down the middle that snuck up the middle. Um, but to answer your question, you know, it's it's based on what you see every single day. A lot of communication with Coach Gaines because I've been in his shoes. And when you're a pitching coach, you pretty much, you know, you're like a coach within the team because you have your own team. You're down there. You're the one guy that watches every bullpen. Nobody else is down there that watches everything. And I have to trust him as well. Um, so we, we met this morning. We talked about our pitching, looked at it from every angle. Um and then you're trying when you don't when you have an unproven bullpen, you're just trying to throw guys in different roles. Like Zestawicki was a great example. He had not been in that, hadn't pitched in six days. We thought his velocity would be a little bit better and be able to beat some bats. And his slider, he throws so many strikes, he just didn't get it done. Um, so who will be the next guy in that situation? You know, you just start figuring that stuff out as you move along. So the Diamond Heels have been playing well defensively so far fielding 979 on the season what are your observations on where they can continue to improve yeah you know i think you just got to make plays um it's not just fielding well it's also making big plays Warbath made some yesterday stokely let that ball sneak by him that's a play we got to make um i think continuing to get better at communicating uh you know which we work on every single day fly ball communication but i've been pleased with our defense but I would say the thing that sticks out the most that we need to improve on, continue to improve on, is controlling the running game. Um, you know, if, we have, if we're facing a team like a Louisville that's going to run a ton, we've got to vary our looks, we've got to vary our holds, and we got to do a good job of giving us a chance to throw that guy out when he does steal. Interesting stuff. It's always fun to talk baseball. Mm -hmm. If I'm totally fair and honest, I love football and basketball, but I'm a baseball guy through and through so it's been a pleasure to talk to head coach scott forbes that's matt clements we're always sponsored by johnny t-shirt and johnny t-shirt.com thank you coach thank y'all and y'all have a great week thank you we'll see you at the bosch